Let's go over to our friend Mark Farzetti here and get our friend on here and see what, what's going on, and we'll get his opinion here. How you doing, Farzee? Uh, I got to be honest there, uh, Sills. You've been living rent-free in my head since our conversation last week because I've been doing exactly what you've been, you been you were just talking about. The whole 3-4 transition, it's like we have it in our head that the Eagles have already been running Vic Fangio's system, where, in fact, they've been running their version of Vic Fangio's system, but they've still been util utilizing more than anything the base 4-3. So now with Fletcher Cox retiring, our conversation last week, going back to Fletcher Cox, moving to the middle, or excuse me, to the outside there in that 3-4 with Chip Kelly and Billy Davis. I, um, I I just have grown – I've only gotten more concerned about the Eagles' defense, really, since the end of the season. And I know that shouldn't be the case. They've added some good pieces, but this is a pretty big transition, and they're missing one of their big guns in Fletcher Cox now. So that is – that's obviously a concern. Here's where I think – here, let me, let me set this question up again, and then I'll go into Jordan Davis here. Between Nolan Smith and Jordan Davis, who gets a second contract or do neither? <laughs> I I think Jalen Carter's the guy. If if you had to choose between no no Jordan Davis or Nolan Smith, I mean. Oh, I'm sorry. No, okay, no. Maybe I misheard you. I, I think I think Jordan Davis. Uh, Nolan, it, it doesn't make any sense to me the infatuation the Eagles seem to have right now with Nolan Smith. Now I understand you're talking about a first round draft pick, but this is a guy that played his first game as a pro in the preseason and then talked about how his shoulder was bothering him. On the other side of things, you have N'Kobe Dean the previous season that was supposedly having a bad shoulder, and that has not been an issue uh, really in his time as a pro, not that it really affected the Eagles. It's been a, you know, a, a toe injury. It's been an ankle injury. It's been stuff like that. But N'Kobe Dean dropped so far in the draft because of an alleged shoulder issue. Nolan Smith didn't drop. He's still first-round pick, yeah. and he has an admitted shoulder issue. And I know he got it scoped. and. Fine, but this was something that was bothering him in college. It was bothering him after his first game as a pro. It probably was bothering him throughout his first entire season as a pro. And then after the season, he has it supposedly taken care of. So I, I don't I don't look at Nolan Smith and go, oh, this is a guy that's really going to fill a big roster spot. Nolan Smith's a guy I go it, it, going into training camp. I'm like, oh, yeah, that's right. Nolan Smith's here. Like that, it's not, he's not in my plans for the Eagles' immediate future. I would say this about Jordan Davis, and if they play it this way, you know, if you played him on first and second down, you yanked his ass off the field on third down. When you went to nickel package, you're not only going to preserve him, but you're going to play him from a place of strength. He was so good against the run. And the reason that I say Jordan Davis is going to have a better career than Nolan Smith, I don't think you can just escape what he did in that play against Josh Allen when he ran him down like a water buffalo. And he's running at 350 pounds. No... I, I just had Steve Tasker on. Steve Tasker goes that, you know, Josh Allen stiff-armed Aaron Donald to the ground. Nobody does that to that guy. And this guy brought that guy down like he was hunting, like, like he was hunting antelope. I mean, it was – you. I can't excuse – but to me, that means this then. Okay. Well, let me play him from a place of strength. Pull him out. Get another defensive uh, – pass rusher in there in the defensive tackle you got milton williams in there go to a forefront you just hired a guy for 18 million dollars in that bryce huff go huff sweat carter and williams there's your front four passing right there on fourth on third down where most 70 percent of the time anyway you're going to be a nickel and you're going to preserve the kid so to me i say this to you and it's a long way around this but I think they've played him out of position the last two years. Could be. Uh, again, I got to see him 100% uh, when it comes to either of these two characters, where it comes to uh, a guy like Jordan Davis or it comes to a guy like Nolan Smith. I have to see Jordan Davis play a full season at a very high level. I, I that's That's something I haven't seen yet. When it comes to Nolan Smith, I need to see him go out there and make sure that his shoulder is at 100%. Before I start dreaming up, like it almost sounds like almost like a NASCAR package in some instances that you would use back in the day when they termed it the NASCAR package. That's something that obviously I think would get a lot of interest from Philadelphia Eagles fans. They would absolutely love that to see that kind of aggression. But I think in one case, it's going to be about health. The other case, it's going to be about conditioning. And one of the reasons to get back to your previous question about 
Jordan Davis. One of the reasons I'm confident in him is I think that unfortunately he's the kind of guy that has to play himself into shape. And I don't mean to say that because usually when you say that, it, oh, he's lazy. I don't think that's the case. I think the Eagles having this, uh, you know, this OTA as early as they have at earliest, they've had it really, I think in the Sirianni era. By the way, it's an added one. It, yeah, exa- it's, they've never, yeah, they, yeah, exactly. And not having it last year, not having it the previous year isn't, is it was, I think it was an awful thing just to get the guy's feet wet. Because when you're getting their feet wet now, that means you can just jump right into the pool when real OTA start up, when, when after the draft, rookie camp's over and guys are coming and, and, and learning their new coordinators and just getting their feet wet now and then jumping into the pool later on in the process. And I think that's only going to help Jordan Davis, especially when you're talking about the conditioning aspect of this, because I think the guy has all the talent in the world. It's a matter of having that conditioning and that stamina so that when we 15, 16, 17, and 18 are rolling around, you're still full bore. I'm going to ask you a question here. And I, I, I here, here. In the three years that Jalen Hurts has played quarterback for the Eagles, we, we, would you agree with me that one has been exceptional? Extremely exceptional. Yeah. One. Would you agree? <laughs> yes. I would absolutely I think we're frozen here a little bit. Uh, you got to be kidding me. Hopefully we get him back. Oh. Hopefully we get Mark Farzetta back here. Oh, Jesus. I uh, think he's frozen here a little bit. As far as he's good on my end. Well, he's frozen here. Let's see if we can get him hooked up here again. And, and again, where I'm going to go here with him is the expectations. Okay. And the expectations. Hey, 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 let's let's bring in Mark here and see if he's good. No, oh, Mark, I think that's me on my end. Was that you? I'll t- all right, fine. I'll take um, no responsibility whatsoever. Or am I shaking? Mark, again? you there? I'm I'm here. Damn it. Okay. <laughs> okay. Jeez. So let me let me throw this at you here. Okay. Would you agree that that Jalen Hurts has had one really spectacular year? Absolutely. He has had one good, spectacular year. Everything else has been good, but MVP caliber, where he's only losing the MVP award to Patrick Mahomes, he's had one year like that. And even, I don't know if we've talked about this before, but going into that San Francisco game, you have him, Jalen Hurts, as the favorite to win the MVP, going into the 49ers game of this past season. I, I didn't. I didn't see that from Jalen Hurts. I know he had just, you know, scampered in for an 11-yard touchdown run in overtime against the Bills to help win that game for the Eagles, but I had not seen that MVP version of Jalen Hurts all year long. So I know that was in the conversation. I know he was the odds-on favorite. I didn't see that. The guy I saw two years ago is the guy that I hope you see the vast majority of throughout the vast majority of Jalen Hurts' career. So there is still a lot to work on. Now, you go back to Brian Johnson, and now you're bringing a new offensive coordinator. Still see how that goes. How about this, Mark? If everything is equal, now that we found out that the first game of the year is against the Packers, if you were to start your football team between Jordan Love or Jalen Hurts, who would you pick? I'm picking Jalen Hurts, without a doubt. I, look, I really like Jordan Love. Because he's had one good year. He's had one good year as well. But the, the difference that I have here with Jalen Hurts is that I know Jalen Hurts has it between the years. I, I, not to say that Jordan Love doesn't. I don't know if he's as battle-tested as Jalen Hurts has been since being here in Philadelphia. Coming into the whole Carson Wentz fiasco, I mean, at least you knew you were playing behind a Hall of Famer I mean, in Aaron Rodgers out there in Green Bay. You weren't doing that necessarily here in Philly. I, I would ride with Jalen Hurts. And I know that's a conversation, and J- Jordan Love had an incredible year to thrust himself into a comparison like this, and I get it. But if I'm riding with one from starting my football team today for the foreseeable future, I'm going with Jalen Hurts over Jordan Love. I would never, and here's why. I don't think he'll (laughs) ever be the passer that Jordan Love is. Mm. In one season, just like Jalen had with one season, he dwarfs anything he ever did. I mean, this guy has two 1,000-yard receivers. He can't throw for over 3,900 yards or 25 touchdowns. And I'm expecting him to be a a guy who's going to win from the pocket and I'll throw this at you too, Mark. You name me a guy who's had 15 rushing touchdowns that has won a Super Bowl in the last 30 years. Yeah, no, obviously. Season. Mm-hmm. There isn't one. Mm-hmm. So those stats are kind of like Kirk Cousins stats to me. You win Super Bowls from the pocket and you pick your moments rushing. 
to me, now look, I'll, I'll, I'll compromise with you on this. If you go back to 22 and you want to develop Jalen Hurts 22, I think you got a good shot in the next five years of getting back to two. But if you want to expand on the 23 Hurts, he was common last year. And I don't expect that thing to be some sort of leap and bounds because of Kellen Moore. You know, it's funny about the Kellen Moore hire. Everyone hates Dak Prescott. But Dak Prescott's OC for five years was Kellen Moore. I mean, how is that magically all of a sudden going to translate into Jalen Hurts being a better quarterback than what he is when you look at Dak's success, two postseason wins? I'm not getting this. Mm. They're getting further away from 22. Uh, well, here's where I would argue in, in favor of Jalen Hurts and getting a little bit closer to where you were in 22. You had Shane Steichen, and I, I don't buy too much into the you need two years in a system to, to really know it. If you're good, you're good. Uh, yeah. One of the things one of the things Fletcher Cox said was, you know, good players just find a way, or great players find a way. He talked about a conversation he had with D'Amico Ryans one year when they were switching over to a different scheme. And D'Amico Ryan said, hey, great players just find a way. You're going to move into this 3-4 scheme instead of the 4-3? Then, well, guess what? If you're a great player, you're going to find a way to help your team win football games. I think Jalen Hurts will find a way to help his team win football games. But I think that the coaching last year was atrocious. And I think that the coaching for the Green Bay Packers was incredible. Think about this. I remember watching. Watch. watch, Go back. For anyone that didn't see it, if you haven't watched it, just as a football fan, you got to go back and you got to watch the Packers and Cowboys in Dallas uh, for the playoffs this year. That was it. That it it was it. He put him in. He put the Cowboys in a blender. Is what he did. He lulled him to sleep with the run meticulous drive down the field, perfectly executed by the players, not taking anything away by them. But it was the perfect – it was like after a, a game when you hear coaches talk about, well, you got to do a better job putting players in a great position to have success. They put their players in a great success uh, position to have success, and the players executed. It was exactly what every coach talks about after every single game, whether or not they executed, whether they did a good game plan. The Packers did everything, crossed every T, dotted every I, dotted every lowercase J in that game. That's how meticulous they were. That was coaching. The Eagles didn't have that last year. Not even close to it last year. And they show you their cards by going, all right. Well, I like, if, we're, if you're Jeffrey Lohr, you're like, all right, I like this Nick Sirianni guy because he makes me feel like I run the show. So that's great. So he can stay there and continue to do that because no coordinator is going to jump over a head coach to get to me. That's not happening. So Nick Sirianni is that barrier. They bring in Kellen Moore, obviously experienced. I think when it comes to Jalen Hurts, I think he has it between the years more than Dak Prescott has it between the years. So I have more hope for him of having success in the Kellen Moore scheme. And as I have told you before, if if you're someone that really doubts Jalen Hurts, this is going to be potentially your favorite year ever yeah. for you to pat yourself on the back because there is no ex- there are no excuses for Jalen Hurts. You have an offensive coordinator now who has plenty of experience, has had a number one offense. He's worked with multiple quarterbacks in his career. And now he's coming here to Philadelphia to take over an offense, as you mentioned, 2,000 yard receivers. You're bringing in, in my opinion, one of the best, if not the best, pure running back in the entire NFL in Saquon Barkley, top three at worst. And there, there's, there's zero, zero excuse. Oh, well, we got to do this. We got to do that. No, no, no. You have the players. Now do you have the scheme? Now do you have the true talent at the quarterback position? I believe the Eagles do. I'm expecting offensively at least this team to have a very good season. Uh, But it's all out there. It's a prove-it year again for Jalen Hurts in year two of this contract. I know you got to run. i got two questions here for you. Final two questions. Um, Where's this contract extension from the Jets for Hassan Reddick? And every time I get you on, I'm going to bring this damn thing up because let me tell you something, Mark. Okay, what is it now? 13, 14, two weeks now that we're looking at since that deal has happened? The Jets have had no contract <laughs> talks with him. They're going to pay him 15 million bucks. They got the better player between him and Huff. They're going to let him walk. They're going to draft either the kid Bowers or an edge rusher versus the kid from Florida State. They're going to replace him, get a compensation pick of a third rounder before the Eagles even get a chance to use the 26 second rounder. Now you tell me how in the world is that not being forced out by Vic Fangio? Because that is not a Howie Roseman way of doing business. It just seems like get out at any expense. 
I'm because right, do you agree? It's one thing for the Jets to go, well, here's a two year contract expense extension at 21 million. Or whatever. I would have went, oh, all right. Well, so we got more money, got more money than a 15. They're paying them an X. Six is six. It's 12 million over two, right? Mm-hmm. So you're like, okay, but nothing, not even a hint, not even a hint of a deal. I mean, it seems still chaotic to me. I'm not Javon Hardgrave played his final year out with the Eagles. Got 20 million from the 49ers. Why wouldn't they let him just play it out? Uh, so I to answer your question, I don't know. And you and I have talked about this a couple of times already. It, it, the minute we saw the alert come up that the trade had gone through, I was waiting for that follow-up trade up and announce a three-year extension for Hassan Rank and all stuff. And it never came. And I'm still waiting. We're both still waiting. This doesn't make any sense. So if he's going to play on 15 million up there, why not just play on 15 million here in Philadelphia when you have the money? It's not like the Eagles are scraping, scraping by here with salary cap space. They got plenty of it. So it doesn't make any sense. Um, the the two things. One, I think you're dead on. I think this is a Fangio thing more than anything because the only yeah. other thing, the only other thing, as I said, you've been living rent free in my head here, friend. The only other thing that makes sense is how he was going to drastically undercut Hassan Reddick for the upcoming season. And and maybe he was going to give him a two-year deal that was similar to in philosophy to that of what they allegedly offered Chauncey Gardner-Johnson a year ago before he went and signed with the Detroit Lions. Where I was like, oh, yeah, this is the deal. It's a three-year deal. But the last year of the deal is where you make the money. But you'll never see that last year. We, we both know it. So – what I think, I'm on the same page as you. This was more of a Fangio decision than anything. I'm, I'm just not going to use this guy like you would use him in the past. So this isn't the Fangio style scheme. This is the Fangio scheme. I don't have room for him here. I'm not going to be able to use him. The only other thing that makes sense is the idea of Howie Roseman just saying, sure, go seek a trade because this is our restructure. You don't like our restructure, then go find that trade. I find it very weird, though. Two things, once again, that he didn't resign anything different with the Jets to this point. And that any type of offer from the Eagles to Sean Reddick that would have been undercutting the fourteen and a half million that he was due for this season hasn't come out. It, where's that? But so the only thing that makes sense is there was no room for him at the Fangio Inn. Finally, here, Devontae Smith. There's conversation that they're working on an extension. Well, Mark, for me, if I'm his people, first and foremost. I got a couple questions on signing a contract extension. Now, the Eagles have the leverage on the fifth-year option. But on the extension, Devontae has the leverage because he could just say no and force them into that May 2nd fifth-year option. You're not going to let him walk in to a final year of his contract and let him get nothing in compensation at the end of the season so he could force their hand on that option. Well, Mark, check this out. So why would I do this? Who's going to be the head coach if Nick Sirianni fails? Is he going to be the head coach here? Wait a minute. What if Jalen has a bad season? Do I want him throwing footballs to me? What are you going to do with AJ? Are you really going to keep two $20 million guys? And why would I sign a contract right now when CD Lamb and Justin Jefferson haven't set the market? And people go, well, it's Philly. And it, you know how he wants to get ahead of the deal. Hang yeah. on here. If Jefferson signs a $30 million deal, and if uh, CD signs a $28 million deal and say that Devontae signs a $22 million deal, you're talking about $8 million bucks over the next three years. That's $25 million you're going, hey, you know what? I want to be an Eagle. That ain't worth me wanting to be an Eagle at $25 million just to go, I'm going to burn that in a trash can. <laughs> I think this is the fifth-year option. If you're Devontae, you don't sign an extension here, or do you? For whatever reason, this is to, to what you alluded to earlier, the Eagles have a way. Howie Roseman, Joe Banner, even they have that carrot they dangle out in front of their players. I remember it's a case, bag of money up front. It's it, exactly. And I mean, you could go back to a much lesser talent, but still the same scenario. A guy like Reggie Brown back in the day with the Eagles, where they yeah. dangled that carrot out front. It's like, oh, hey, I'll sign it. Now, Devontae Smith is obviously far better and superior in talent to a guy like Reggie Brown. However, it's a similar scenario in that he's going to get that bag of cash offered in front of him. Now, it's a question of how big you want that bag of cash to be, of course. And if you don't have anything to compare it to with other guys around the league, then I don't think you're signing that deal. Devontae Smith could be one of the first players to go, you know what? I am going to bet on myself. I am. Yeah. 
from from a skill position, set, I am going to bet on myself in, for this year and just go forward. And I understand that you guys want to make sure that you have your interior, excuse me, your offensive lineman locked up. I, I know you got a guy like AJ Brown who's don't making. Don't you want to see money. the environment if it's yeah. calmer? Yeah. And if if you're look the the only thing in football that I think really gets at these guys, and you know it far better than I do, is it just takes one play, just one takes play. one play, and all of a sudden. You're looking at a whole – forget about getting a bag of cash. You're lucky to get, like, a, a, a Ziploc bag with a couple of bucks in it. You know what I'm saying? Like, hey, forget about the big old – See you later. <laughs> you know, exactly. Me and you, me and you have been on that end. Hey, you know, like, here. <laughs> hey, here's your final check. What about compensation? Compensation? You work in broadcasting, son. <laughs> exactly. Farsley, thank you so much, my friend. Don't forget, folks, check him out. He starts the mornings off each and every single day here on – Jacob Sports, he is so awesome. I've grown to like you even. No, no. Hey, listen here. I was like this. Eh, just another loudmouth at time. Like, you know, <laughs> like me and all that. And then I'm like this. No, no. I told Xander even. I'm like, this guy's good, man. This You're very good. good here. I'm really mm -hmm. good. So you start our mornings off. Thank you so much, Mark. My pleasure, my friend. Take it easy. You bet. The great Mark Farzetta. Appreciate him joining us, man. He does a really good job. I enjoy watching him, and don't forget, like I said, you can catch him each and every single morning kicking off our morning broadcast here. We got a bunch of topics still. Where's the Hassan Reddick extension? What happened? Hey, by the way, I want to make it very clear. I had no problem moving the kid. Remember what I told you? They disrespected the guy completely. You know when it started? In the locker room. Okay. The topic graveyard is miles long at this point. <laughs> hey, say this to you here. Hold on here. No, 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 no. You signed a guy I hate because he can't, he's not an upgrade. And where is the extension? Means the Eagles never offered him. Which means Fangio's got a lot of say. Which means that Vic Fangio may actually have more power than the head coach. Because he's not going to have any decision making. None. None whatsoever. Vic's picking and choosing his coaches and the type of player he wants. Okay. All right. Oh, no, 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 no. You guys said that I didn't know what I was talking about when Nick Vic Fangio took the head job as DC of the Eagles. That it was his call to move him. You guys called me a liar. It's now true. Sills made it up. What does he know? Played out to be true. How you doing? By the way, this Devontae Smith thing, I'm not signing a contract extension with the Eagles. Why would I? Who's your quarterback going to be in two years? Who's your head coach going to be in two years? And who's your offensive coordinator going to be next year? Is it a given that Kellen Moore is coming back next year when you have hired so many new coordinators year in and year out? Um, if Devontae doesn't take the bag of cash, will ownership set him up for failure? Wow, it's either take the contract or we'll trade you? I hadn't thought of that. Because as soon as Hassan Reddick opened his mouth, that was the end of his demise. I never thought of that. I, ne I didn't, I didn't I, that's a great point. Oh, he doesn't want to take it. I don't think Devontae Smith is a guy that's going to do this. I don't think he's a guy that's going to be impressed with that upfront money like that. I, I don't. I, I don't think that. If I were him, I would force them into giving the May 2nd fifth-year option. Okay? Smitty to Denver for certain. Straight up?
Devontae Smith. And they just signed Patrick Sertain on a fifth-year option. You sign the May 2nd fifth-year option. You send him to Denver for Patrick Sertain. Would you do it? Yeah, yeah, because Parsons went in that draft. Wow. Patrick Sertan for Devontae Smith. Would you do it? And then draft a wide receiver at 22. It's not stupid. But I really love the player. But I told you, don't fall in love with the player. So I can't be a hypocrite. Devontae Smith for Patrick Sertang. One guy's 25 years old. He's at a more coveted position, corner. He's one of the best lockdown corners in the game. Smitty's a really good wide receiver. He's not one of the top five guys at his profession. Sertain is. Look, look at Joe. No. You think wide receivers are more important than corners? You might want to check how Kansas City's winning games now with defense and Mahomes. They got two rookie corners. If you guys would have listened to me, you would have had McDuffie instead of Jordan Davis playing corner for you. We ain't paying two wide receivers $25 million, so we need to move off either Smitty or AJ and draft a young one. That's why it's not – Xander, that's why it's not stupid. Smitty has championship pedigree. Not what Hurts he doesn't. Corners are getting paid big money. Yeah, because it's a coveted position. Wide receivers get paid big money, and they don't win titles. If I can only have one, I think I'll take A.J. Owens over Smitty. Smitty's kind of like T. Higgins to you then, and Jalen Waddle, right? To Tyreek Hill. He's kind of like that, right? He's kind of like those guys, right? Yeah. He's not a Devontae Adams, or he's not like a – DK Metcalf. That's a great point, how we can't draft, but he can make deals like this. This is not horrible. Devontae Smith signed a fifth-year option, send him to Denver, and you get the corner. And you're sending a wide receiver to an offensive-minded coach in Sean Payton. It kind of makes sense. It kind of makes sense. And to many people's point, um, in court, uh, including BJ or LJ, whatever, like BJ would say, what did, what did you say, BJ? It's a big cap hit. So I don't know if you can move AJ Owens. So BJ's right. He brings up the money. So it'd be too much of a cap hit. Still, as I've been banging this Smitty drum for weeks, it's a financial decision. Smitty has more equity. And, and he's younger. Okay? And he's younger. Smitty is Howie's trophy wide out. That's true, too. That's true, too. Absolutely. After all the wide receiver busts he's had in the past, Howie's not trading his poster kid. Tyson, brilliantly thought out, and you're right. Did I, hey, Flexion, did I say BJ? I meant LJ. I, I, I meant LJ. Sorry, BJ. I, I, meant, I meant LJ, man. I didn't mean BJ. <laughs> yeah, LJ's got a new nickname. It's BJ. <laughs> Yeah, Sills respects LJ so much he calls him BJ. Yeah, that's probably true. If you get a nickname 
from me, AJ's too young to move. AJ, AJ is young too. He is young. He's not that old. He's he's not that old. Come on, BJ. You know if you get a nickname from Big Sills, you know you actually have an identity. 